Let's go create a deadlock. Over on the left-hand side, I'm going to go create a couple of tables first. I'm going to create lefty and righty, and I'm just going to throw a few rows into there. doesn't really matter what values they have. So I've got a left table and a right table. I'm going to start over on the left-hand table by doing a begin tran, and I'm not going to commit it. I'm going to do an update on the lefty table in the left window. Now, over in the right window, I'm going to do a begin tran on the right table. Both of these work just fine. Neither of them are blocking each other. They're both able to hold on to their locks and make as much progress as they want. Over in the right-hand window, I'm going to uh, go a little further. I'm now going to try to update the lefty table. So the window on the right is now trying to update the table on the left. And he's blocked. He's not making any progress. But as far as SQL Server is concerned, this is fine. SQL Server is just waiting for the query over on the left to either commit or roll back. There's no default timeout. SQL Server will wait forever for this. This is just plain old blocking. It's not deadlocking. But now, over on the left-hand side, here's what's going to happen. And I'm going to explain it before I hit execute because things are going to kind of happen fast. On the left-hand side, I'm now going to try to update the right-hand table. I can't because the right-hand table is already blocked, owned by this guy over here. So when I try to update it, SQL Server is going to wake up every five seconds and then go look for a Mexican standoff type situation where neither of these queries can make any progress until the other one either commits or rolls back or really just rolls back. So at that point, SQL Server's deadlock monitor is going to wake up and things are going to move quick. Somebody's going to die. Let's go see what happens. I'm going to run the update on the left-hand table. And within five seconds, whammo, I get this process was deadlocked and was chosen as the deadlock victim. And the one over on the right-hand side, all of a sudden his blocking problem went away and he now has three rows affected. This is a deadlock where SQL Server woke up, recognized the Mexican standoff, and chose to kill one of the queries involved. Now, troubleshooting it after the fact can be a real pain in the rear, because even if you're the developer who is running this query, you have no idea who killed you or why. And this is where a really cool query comes in. I'm going to go clean up after myself and close this window. A really cool query comes in that was originally written by Eric Darling. And this thing's open source. It's called SP Blitz Lock. And it goes through and analyzes the deadlocks you've had recently. Doesn't require anything to be installed or turned on. It just works in SQL Server starting from 2012 forward. All currently, I say currently supported, but 2008, 2008 R2 are still technically under support for another year, I think. So I got SP Blitzlock ran, and it shows me, here's my two queries. It shows me who won and shows me who the victim was. It shows me what the query is, the queries that are involved. I can go click on them. I only get their current statement, not all of their statements leading up to this exact moment. All kinds of other fun diagnostics, too. The tables that were involved in the locking. Scrolling across and move things around a little bit here, make it easier for you all to see. The login name, who is involved in the deadlock, how long that query had been open, all kinds of fun stuff. Then also, there's an analysis section down here at the bottom, and this kind of gives you the big picture of which objects are frequently involved in deadlocks, which queries are frequently involved in deadlocks. You can see more information about them. Eric gives you little SP Blitz cache commands here so that you can analyze the plan cache to see what their query plan was. Now, of course, because it's the plan cache, you can only see stuff that is still in the plan cache. That can disappear fairly quickly. So don't be surprised if this doesn't show up when you go to run it two days later or three days later. You can also run SP Blitz index to get more uh, information about which indexes are involved on those tables, which ones are currently getting blocked the most. SQL Server's missing index recommendations on that table, so you can see which indexes it makes sense to add. So that's how you create a deadlock, and then how you start troubleshooting them after the fact with SP Blitzlock.